Before getting into the analysis of pumps in a water distribution system, I wanted to cover briefly pumps in general. All pumps fit into one of two categories. These categories are kinetic or positive displacement. Now as you can imagine from the names, kinetic is a type of pump that's going to add kinetic energy or velocity. Whereas positive displacement adds energy to the system by either lifting the water or adding pressure head. One of the more common pumps that comes out of the kinetic side are centrifugal pumps, They're pumps that have an impeller and spin and rotate, hence the name centrifugal. And positive displacement pumps include uh, rotary pumps, which are also screw type pumps, where you have a screw, like the Archimedes screw pump, and it basically lifts a packet of water up a hill. Most municipal water systems and, uh, and a lot of applications uh, use centrifugal pumps. A centrifugal pump is, uh, includes this shaft and an impeller. <clears throat> Some work is done on the shaft to spin the impeller. If we look at a side view there of the impeller, it looks like this, where each one of these lines is the vein, our veins, and water comes into the impeller through the eye of the pump. And when we talk about centrifugal pumps and their characteristics, we often want to know what is the diameter of the impeller. So that is simply the, you know, the diameter of this big circle thing with all the veins mounted on it. This system, the, the impeller and the shaft, are often mounted inside <clears throat> what is known as a volute. So water is spinning around inside there and is directed into the discharge pipe by the volute. So as you can see here, water enters the volute through the suction eye, goes into the impeller, the impeller is spinning in the counterclockwise direction, the way that I've drawn it here, and uh, is discharged up through the discharge of the pump. There's a couple things that are important to realize when it comes to centrifugal pump is that when you turn them on, they don't simply run at a set discharge or a set pressure head. For instance, if we ran this pump here that I just redrew down at the bottom left corner, if we ran it right now, water would just come squirting out the top. So the amount of discharge coming out of the top of that pipe would be at its maximum, right? But if we attach to it a pipe that extended way into the sky, we would arrive at a certain point where after pumping after a little while, after pumping for a while, <clears throat> there'd be a level in the water that we just would not be able to overcome. And essentially that would shut off the pump. The pump would still be rotating, but there'd be no flow rate coming out. And that's due to the fact of how heavy that water column is on the energy being added by the pump is that they're now equal. Another way to look at this is in terms of what we call the pump performance uh, curves. So if we wanted to plot this relationship between discharge and head, one could see that as discharge increases, head decreases. Or the alternative is, as the head increases, discharge decreases. And for a frictionless system, which we have here, that's a perfectly straight line, a perfectly straight relationship between discharge and head. But that's not usually what we have. We have a system where there is friction. And friction, what I'm talking about is, uh, as the impeller spins, there's a certain amount of water that gets trapped around it or around the sides of it. Does get, doesn't get flung out perfectly uniformly. I'm also talking about friction in the pipe system as well. So we have <clears throat> an actual performance curve that is related to how big the pump and del impeller diameter is and how big the veins are spaced apart and how much curvature there is to the veins and how much spacing there is between the impeller and the volute. There are a lot of inputs that go into affecting that actual performance curve. 
But as you know, as we just now discovered, that it's a function of the pump itself, the performance curve is, but it's also a function of the system that it's interacting with. How much head is it going to interact with? So when we go to pick a pump, we really do need to start by understanding what are our overall system hydraulics.